Hey folks, Matt McCall here at Future Proof in Huntington Beach. I got the ocean over here. I got the Pacific Coast Highway here. I think that's what they call it. I'm gonna be here all week. We got some of the best interviews lined up, some of the greatest minds in the investment world. Everybody from Ben Carlson, Bob Elliott, Med Fabro, our old friend who's been on a show a couple of times, Ali Webb, you may not know the name, but I'm sure you have a dry bar. Over 150 locations, she started one here in California, grew it, sold it for $300 million. We're gonna hear about her journey and her new journey she has coming out, her new books coming out. She's already been a New York Times bestseller. Uh, we have Matt Hogan coming on, talking about Bitcoin and crypto and how he thinks the first spot Bitcoin ETF will be approved coming up in the next several months. So many guests coming up, but the first one is Joe Duran. Joe is a serial entrepreneur. He sold his firm back in 2019 for $750 million to so guess who? Goldman Sachs. And today, he saved his announcement for today. He's got his newest firm coming out. We sit down, we talk about the investment industry, the way it's gonna change. He talks about artificial intelligence and how it's gonna make a better investing experience for all of you out there. How the RIA world is gonna change. So him and I sit down and we're gonna hear all about his new venture coming up right now with serial entrepreneur, Joe Duran. Welcome to Making Money. This is Matt McCall here once again at Future Proof out in Huntington Beach, joined by Joe Duran. If you don't know the name, you're going to know it in the future. Serial entrepreneur, sold the company Goldman Sachs back in the day. I mean, his articles written, nice. yeah, 2018, written all about you. Um, one of the big names in the RA space and in the investment world. So it's, I, I saw you speak this morning. So yeah. thanks for taking some of time course, to sit down with us here to today. Be, yeah. And you made a big announcement, which we'll get to in a minute yeah, yeah, about your yeah. next venture. But you talked about AI after, which obviously we're all talking about AI. You brought up a really good point. There's a lot of individual investors watch this show. You brought up that you don't need that face-to-face -face anymore. You said the Gen X, and you talked about that. And you look around at people that are attending this, and a lot of Gen X was out here. Can you expand on that a bit and how really investing's changing? Yeah, I think uh, our whole industry is geared around retirees. And retirees have really shaped the dialogue about how we serve clients. And wealth management in particular is an incredibly boring and unimaginative category doing the same thing, really, every advisor is de delivering a financial plan and an investment portfolio. And what has really changed is that when you're talking to somebody in their 70s, geography is really important. In fact, most advisors at this conference found their clients by going to the country club, yeah. then meeting the friends and the friends of the friends and getting referrals. But what's different is after the pandemic, you've had an accelerant and while I don't think the seven-year-olds want to not go to their advisor's offices, the people in their 50s and their 40s, they don't care about geography. Like, you live outside of this country yeah. surfing every day, but you can do your job. Yeah. Well, my wife is too busy dealing with my daughters to go sit in an advisor's office exactly. and hear another boring speech about <laughs> beta and alpha yeah. or any of that. The reality is that what Gen X and younger want is to be understood and work with advisors who live where they live. Yeah. Not geographically, but emotionally. Yeah. That, hey, if I'm a divorcee, I want to work with an advisor who knows what that means. Yeah. If I'm a doctor, that I work with an advisor who works with doctors. That there's, you're going to find an expansion of the level of specialization, but a diminishment in the role of geography in the way we interact and deliver wealth management. And I, I love that because I, I had an RA I sold about two years ago. It was just independent, just, just me and one other guy for 17 uh -huh. years. I uh, started out in my friend's uh, bedroom upstairs uh -huh. and, you know, on my computer with one uh -huh. client and built it out. But I had clients all over the country because I didn't really have an office. I was uh -huh. always like this nomad moving around yeah. the country. And it was tough 15 years ago trying to do that because they said, where's your office? They yeah. want to come sit at a desk and yeah. shake a hand. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I love now that really we can go out and do well, that. But what has really changed? In the old days, you know, my parents' generation, they want to go touch and feel their money. Yeah. They want to go to the bank. Well, what interactions do we have today that are not, mo like you have to touch and feel it on your phone. Yeah. That's it. That's what real is. Yeah. So the perception of what's real is very different for our generation than our parents' generation. Our parents' generation, if they can't see the bank, they're not sure they can trust the bank. Yeah, exactly. Where's That's, my money? That's yeah, what I, think I got yeah, to touch yeah. and feel my money. Well, that has changed. Yeah. Now it's all, again, we're not mobile native, but we are mobile comfortable. And that is the big difference. And then, of course, my kids are 
mobile native. Like they would <clears throat> can't imagine going and seeing a person in wealth management, yeah. even if they were old enough in person. Then like it will never be that way. Yeah. You know, it's funny you mentioned banks. About a year ago, uh, I lost my wallet and I went into the Chase Bank and uh, I said, you know, can I get a couple thousand dollars out? He looked at me like I had three heads. Uh, he goes, we don't carry cash here. I yeah. said, what do you mean you don't carry cash? He's like, do you have your ATM card? I said, no, I told you I lost it. Here's uh -huh. my ID, but I have my passport. I couldn't get cash. Yeah. I could, out of that out of that, per, that branch, I had to go three miles south to a branch that actually yeah. held cash. Uh -huh. If I'd have told that to my grandparents when they were alive, they would have went and took every dollar out. Yeah. They, like, they, they would have scared the heck out of them not having cash yeah. in that branch. So yeah, I, I see that. You talked a lot about AI as well. You know, yeah. How artificial intelligence is gonna tie in to all, everything that we're doing from the RA standpoint. What about from the experience of an investor, are they going to feel something different? Oh, they'll definitely feel something different. There are two things that I think AI is going to accelerate. One of them is the use of behavioral economics. And what do I mean by that? I mean that we all have pre-programmed biases that we're not conscious of, that lead us to suboptimal choices. And there's some amazing behavioral economics tools that are gamified, yeah. that help you identify your shortcomings in your decision making. Are you a short-term thinker or a long-term thinker? Do you look for rewards or protection? The way you frame every financial choice is a trade-off. That kind of insight can help advisors do much better work. It can also help you shorten the trust cycle. So if I can learn how you make financial choices, when you call me, I can be much more prescriptive and shorten the trust cycle by knowing how you and your spouse might have different views and what I need to assure to correct before we ever work together because first of all you'll never ever agree to work with an advisor who doesn't understand you yeah. so if i can shorten my cycle of time to understand you an ai is going to be very very good at that the second big area is that i'm going to be able to serve a lot more clients mm -hmm. in a totally personalized way because of ai yeah because i could actually go to all of my multiple systems have an ai connector that says, find me my financial plan planning clients that uh, have a score of X and who are divorced and then go to my CRM and find everyone over 65 but under 75 who's invested in these kinds of bonds. And I can end up with my list of eight people without going to multiple systems and say, now send them a letter about why they should be okay even though their bond has gone down yeah. X, right? So my level of service and personalization is going to go through the roof. Except the fun part is our industry is so slow moving. And if you have any imagination, you can be well ahead of everyone in creating this incredibly interactive, AI-powered, but human-led experience. Yeah. And I'll talk about that in a minute because that's kind of what you, you, you talked about here this morning. Um, but when you think about that, you know, people will push back and say, well, AI is destroying jobs. Isn't it really creating more productivity? And, and, and no, it's, it's going to... Look, it, it does... When you look at analytics or several of the functions that get done in wealth management, those jobs are going to be gone. Like, there's no question. I'm not going to need somebody pushing the different financial planning buttons. But I need somebody who understands the output to say, oops, this is right. Remember, yeah. AI is actually dumb technology. It's basically doing all the $20 an hour work and $50 an hour work, but it has no judgment. It's So you still need the discretion to know, like, this feels wrong and while the person said that that's not what they really mean yeah and so you're going to be doing higher order work it also is true that you're going to be using your brain more because you're going to be using your judgment more and so what i think you'll see is that advisors will be able to serve many more clients with the same stuff they will not be as much low-end work mm -hmm. and so it's going to require frankly a higher and more sophisticated educated work base otherwise you're in trouble yep yeah. So what is your next venture? I know you saved to actually introduce it here yeah. at, at Future Proof this yeah. morning. What is the big announcement? Well, it's called Rise Growth Partners. And what we're trying to do is to invest and back and actually bring the expertise needed for the next generation of national firms. Firms that today are one to five billion mm -hmm. and we think have the ability to get to 10, 20, 30 billion that we can back with capital and give them help in not just the business management, how are you, how are you structured, how are you serving clients, what's your leadership and measurement, but your tech stack mm -hmm. from the client to the advisor to the back office to the way you sell, both organic and inorganic. So we're bringing in and have partners at the senior levels who've done it. 
so that when you take our capital, we can tell you exactly how you're going to double, triple, quadruple. And uh, we do this proprietary enterprise readiness to identify gaps okay. and let you know where you have gaps. And one of the interesting things that's happened in our discussions, some firms are like, yeah, we want to do, want to do. And we show them, they're like, oh my goodness, you're actually oh, serious. Yeah, no, yeah. but they actually oh. go, you really want to do it? I don't know if I really, <laughs> I like being the king of my little kingdom because yeah. we are going to make them much bigger enterprises. Yeah. So we're very excited about it. So what made you, I mean, obviously you don't have to do this. You can go off in the sunset and do whatever yeah. you want. What made you get back in the game? Uh, well, I like making an impact. I'm on this planet to do that. And I don't know a lot about a lot, but I know a lot about wealth management. And I think I can make an exponential impact if I don't own 100% of the business. Okay. So the original enterprise, when I built Centurion Capital, the first rap firm in the country, we built United Capital, the first yeah. national wealth management firm. I owned 100%, well, not me, but our team and yeah. our employees and everything. And I thought, you know, if I thought exponentially, I would just back the next wave of really successful firms and allow me to make an even bigger impact yeah. and our team to make industry changing impact. Because I think we're going to go through the most interesting period ever in wealth management in the wow. next five years. I think AI is going to change everything. I think the transition of wealth from baby boomer to Gen X is going to require a complete reimagination of branding and client experience. Yeah. And firms aren't going to know how to do it. So we want to help them to really become modern and current. So how do you go after that younger generation? I guess I'm Gen X. Uh, like, yeah, like I'm the, Gen the, X yeah, the millennials yeah. and stuff. How, how do you... You know, I will tell you, though, I, I have a lot of friends that are mid 40s, married, good jobs, seven yeah. figures, you know, net worth. And the stock market still scares them. They don't not yeah. quite sure what advisor to go to. It's still tough to break through to a lot. We're of people. fundamentally all in the same business, and that's to remove financial anxiety. Yeah. It's not to sell you financial products. Yeah. And it's remarkable to me that people in our industry still obsess about we do financial planning, we do tax prep, we do investment yeah. management. I'm like, People don't care what you do. I agree. Yes. Am I going to sleep better at night? Is my life going to be simplified because I'm paying you your fee? And you go online, find me the firm that actually talks about, yeah. we're going to help you reduce financial anxiety. That is what you pay an advisor for. So again, there's so little imagination about brand and yeah. delivery, creating excitement about, oh, we're doing something really important here. and. You know, I never, I don't know how my car works. Yeah. I know that exactly. it, I know that it's got a great stereo and the engine sounds good. Yeah. Or if it's electric, yeah. that it charges and has this much range. Yeah. But we insist on talking about features rather than benefits. It's our, our industry just because they're really smart people, yeah. just obsess about talking about details that no client even understands. I say they don't understand it anyway. Right? Yeah. Understand yeah. It. yeah. It's funny. I had a call. I'm on a, a a, board, a financial board of a non-charity large school in Nicaragua. And I was looking through the portfolio and I was on a call with these guys based out of California. And they went through and all this jargon and everybody's looking at me. I said, oh, I said I'm going to stop you right now. They have no idea what you just said. I'm going to wait. Don't waste your time. You're using words that I don't even understand. Uh -huh. I've been doing it for 20 some years. Yeah. And it's just like, but some people, it's just, they're talking above yeah, them. And yeah. they're like, well, they must be smart. Yeah. They're using these big words yeah. I never heard yeah, of. Yeah. And, you know. Again, it's because uh, we flex IQ like muscles in our industry. And nobody cares. Nobody cares. You're right. Yeah. You said something today which kind of hit me in the gut. You were talking about, you know, when, when you sell your firm, right? Yeah. You know, you have to look at what, what that cash flow would be yeah. for the next 10 years. Yeah. Sold mine within the last two years. And I think back to myself, wow, did I sell it for way too little? It's yeah. like... You know, you had that coming in. It's fun. I mean, it was nice to get rid of the stress and do yeah. something different. But I'm sitting here, I'm thinking, I got to start another one. I got to do this again. Like, it's just... Well, again, there's, there's... I have the incredible good fortune that I I just get to do what I love. Yeah. And I love what I... I love what we do. And yeah. it's one of our key pillars of our values. If you go to our website at um, risegrowth.com, you'll see one of our key pillars is only three years. We love what we do. Yeah. So we have people who just love making an impact. Yeah. I've always said to people, like, what do you do? I'm like, I've never worked a day in my life. Uh -huh. I've, I've always been an entrepreneur. I create things. I have fun. I get to interact yeah. with great people yeah. like you and meet people. That's not work. No. Living the best life. Yeah, that's so, right. hey, listen, Joe, thank you so much of for all course. you do for this industry. I mean, you're, you're a legend in the industry. So thank, thank you for so much for coming on our show. It. Yeah. Thank so, you. folks, again, Joe Thanks. Durant, serial entrepreneur, Rise Growth. Go check it out. It's his new venture. And I guarantee it's going to be successful as everything else he's done. 
So thanks again for joining in. Uh, we're here at Future Proof. I'm Matt McCall, and that was Making Money. Opinions expressed on this program are solely those of the contributor and do not necessarily reflect the opinions of Stansbury Research, its parent company, or affiliates.